Facebook, 101 FM, Logan City. Our top 10 list this morning. Top 10 signs that you may be addicted to the internet. If you want to add to uh, add to that, just do it via the Facebook page this morning. We'd love to hear from you. I will do that about 11.40, I reckon. Um, it's always great when you get guests who come into the studio for the first time. And Serena Thompson is one of these people. And they put the makeup on just because we've got a little bit of a video going on here as well. Uh, anyway, I have to say I'm, I'm very, very flattered, Serena, that you decided to um, have your bucket list, one of the ones ticked off by coming on the show. Welcome to 101 FM. Oh, thank you for having me, Mike. And it sounds like you've got an exciting bucket list at turning 40. Oh, what I wish to turn 40 again. I'm um, swimming with dolphins and all sorts. Sounds great. Yeah, I can't wait. So I turned 40 in February, so I have a big list of things that I'm going to tick off next year. Good on you. That, that sounds fantastic. Now, not only have you written a book, you were telling me off air, this is very, very exciting, a nomination for this yes, book. Yes, I've been nominated for Picture Book of the Year through the uh, Children's Book Council of Australia. That is fantastic. I'm so impressed. So tell us a little bit about the book. Okay, so I write children's picture books and this book is called Sapakoot Ate My Boot and it's about a curious character called Sapakoot and he's a, a very adorable purple bat and he flies around town and, and you know wreaks havoc and makes a mess he eats things he chews things and I have a little encounter with him in the book that sounds uh, yeah. amazing and uh, thank you very much for sending me the PDF of that as well I had a chance to look at it the illustrations are fantastic uh, they are beautiful a lady called Sarah Hammond did the illustrations she's a New Zealand born but local Gold Coaster now so yeah I, I, I met her through a networking group and we just connected and I sent her the book and she just the characters came to life because obviously you, you've got the story which you've done, but just to have that and they and even for me the colours are just mm. fantastic. So what what's the age group? What what is your target market it's for this? Primary one? school age group, but in my eyes, it's any age group from zero to forty. Because yeah. I particularly love picture books and I still buy picture books, and I look at them every day. I read them. I get lost in the illustrations. So the, it is aimed at primary school, but yes, I think anyone can read the story to their children or read it for themselves and that's the thing you know nowadays parents are too busy and you know the babysitter now is an ipad yeah. unfortunately and parents are reading less to the kids and yet you get something like this that a, a parent would enjoy i think sort of going back to the days when i was growing up it was when harry potter was out yeah. and my wife used to faithfully read and by the time we went to see the movies you had this vision in your head mm -hmm. of what the characters were like yeah. what you've done is taken it a stage further this is this is what the characters look like this yeah. is how beautiful Beautiful they are, um, which is terrific. So, what's your background? Have you always been interested in writing? Um, ever since I was a tiny little girl, I've loved books and I always wanted to be a writer. But in my world, they were wildly f imaginary people. I didn't think they were real. Okay. It wasn't until I got to sort of 10, 11, and 12, I realised they were real people, but I thought they were extraordinary, famous people. And now that I'm in my 40s or near 40, Nearly. I realise that I can be one of them and so I've just gone for it. It's Absolutely. something I've always wanted to do. And you've got a great publisher as well, I have yeah. to say. I mean, I, you know, I, I did promise Ocean Reeve I'd give him a mention this morning. So uh, In-House Publishing, one of our fine sponsors here at 101 FM. And I'm guessing, knowing Ocean, he would have been very supportive throughout the entire process for you. Yeah, he's been my number one fan since day one and he has been extremely supportive and yeah, he's been on the journey every step of the way. So tell us about the journey um, from, from sort of conception to birth, as it were, okay. of the book. How long has it taken you? It's been a two year process. I was just sitting at the kitchen bench one day and I just felt like this wave of creativity come over me. And I just thought to myself, I'm gonna write a book. So I sat there with some paper and I cut it up and I sta stapled it together. So I made it look like a blank book. Yeah. And I just started to write. And that's how it came together. And, and obviously, you've you've let family and friends see it before publishing. What have they what what have they sort of said to you about it? Yeah, everyone just loves it. Hundred percent support from everyone. And now that strangers are seeing it and reading it, they just look at me with this glowing glow in their eyes, and they're just so proud for me and happy for me. And yeah, everyone just loves the book. 
which is terrific. And, you know, you need the feedback from the strangers because, yeah. let's face it, family and friends tell us what we want yeah, to hear. Yeah, a bit biased. They yeah. are, aren't yeah. they? And you'll think, oh, I hated it, but I'm just going to say I loved it anyway yeah. because that's what people do. But that's great you're getting that reaction. Um, so I'm guessing that you'll be doing the whole um, the boot launch and, mm-hmm. and getting your name out there. When's all that happening? Well, the books will be here very shortly. So I would say the book launch will be mid-November towards the end of November. So no date set yet, but um, you can visit my website and we'll keep that updated and I'll give you guys a call. Oh, absolutely. We we want to find out because obviously we'll give that a mention as well. Yeah. So this is, uh, and you said when you sent me a a message that you're actually um, writing a series of books that encourage children to nourish their experiences of emotions. So what's, what's all that about? So, because, like you said before about the iPad interaction, I think kids need to get back into books, touching, feeling, smelling. So, the series is based around emotional intelligence for children. So, to give them a little insight to, it's okay to feel this emotion and this is what this emotion means. So, this book is on curiosity. So, I think children should be allowed to be curious. Absolutely. Yeah. But there's so many, like... People pull kids down and they ask them to be quiet, don't touch yeah. this, don't do that. And, you know, the, the trouble is, and I remember growing up, obviously I'm a lot older than you, but growing up uh, in the 60s and 70s, it was children should be seen and not heard. That mm-hmm. was the sort of upbringing that you had. We live in a different society now. We live in, and there's lots of there's lots of interference, there's lots of noise out there mm-hmm. as well. And it is, it's a difficult time for kids to be kids. Yeah. They're meant to almost grow up too quickly, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So I just wanted to bring kids back down to that, creative level of reading a book, smelling the book and knowing that they can go into their own imagination and get lost like I did as a child. Well, if you go back, and again, we mentioned Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling. I mean, that was just that was just something that came into her head. Mm -hmm. And the Harry Potter franchise is huge. So who knows? You could be the next J.K. Rowling. Oh, I hope so. (laughs) So do I, because you know what? We got the first interview here on 101. Yeah, I'll always remember you guys. Thank Uh, you. (laughs) You always remember your first time on radio. That's for sure. So what about the name? Because uh, Sapakut is quite unusual. Where did that come from? It actually came from my uh, six-year-old daughter. She was four at the time and I sat there and I said to my kids I'm going to write a book and I'm going to have this character that's called uh, it's a little bat I said what should I call him and my daughter came over she put her hand on my leg and she said Sapakoot wow and then that was it that was it yeah he was born so you realise that she'll be after royalties if you do get rich and famous. She'll be turning around and say, Mum, that was my idea. I want 50% of this. Um, yeah, she's already mentioned that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was you know, her idea. That's, that's what it is. So what's next? I mean, obviously, uh, we're going to get this one launched. I'm guessing that, um, you know, depending on the success of this, are we looking possibly at a series of this particular character? Um, I will see how things go, but I already have five other characters that are involved with this series. So I'm in the middle of, I've written four of those books and they're being illustrated as we speak. So that will be 2017 that they're available. But I don't know, he's going to come to life a little bigger than what he is right now. Yeah, which, again, I'm just thinking of obvious marketing opportunities. Uh You've read the book, now buy the doll, buy the toy, whatever. I mean, you really could be onto something. Yeah, I've I've already looked into the little plush toy because I think he needs to come alive where we can we can hold him and play with him because he's such an adorable character. Well, very often when you go out and about in the bookshops, you see that in children's books in particular, they will have either a plastic toy or a plush toy, like you mm-hmm. say. And I think it just adds, especially if they're the sort of five to 10 year old age group, they do want something that they yeah. can have there. And I have had a few kids mention if I have one, could they have one? So it's come well, from the your, kids. That's your audience yeah. and they're the ones that are going to tell you. And the joy of children, of course, they don't tell you what you want to hear. Mm. They just they say, say it as, it, it yep, is, as they want terrific. to. Yep. So, so finally, as a mum, obviously you've got to look after your kids as well. It must have been so time consuming sort of splitting yourself from being mum to being author. It is, but my kids are so proud of me that they sit alongside of me the whole time. So if I'm sitting and writing or if I'm learning or educating myself they'll sit with me and they're so curious as to what am i doing and obviously they're interested in the process and Mm -hmm. who knows you might be starting something off here yeah and nothing wrong with that at all no um uh, serena we wish you every success with this book and the series of books uh we want to know when the launch is because we will get a mention on here yeah uh and just keep us posted and just remember where you did your first interview i will and if i could just mention that the book is available now for a pre-sale on my website which is all the w's dot serenathompson.com or you can go to in-house publishing Yes, and order and, through them. 
and, and as we say, Ocean Reeve, who you can hear on this very radio station on a Thursday morning. Um, I think it's Thursday mornings that he's doing. Uh, he will be glad to put you uh, put you and a book in the same room together. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. And as I say, hopefully we'll see you again. We'll hear all about it. And we look forward to uh, great success in yeah. your book writing. Thanks for having me, Mike. My Thanks, pleasure. guys. Serena Thompson on 101 FM. Just a quick reminder for you, if you want to get some more information, if you missed the details, you can always ring our reception here on 3808 for more information.